Cheers. Thanks for coming on, guys. Cheers, My guys. pleasure, bud. What's going on? Aaron Thanks Lewis, John Daly, two legends in their own right. Your birthday tonight here. We're at Losers. Yes, sir. Happy 50. 50th. Ha yeah, happy birthday. Happy 50th, Bubba. Thank you. Do you feel 50? No. No? No, not at all. Well, I mean, sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I'm, everything hurts. <laughs> but most of the time, no, I, I don't feel 50 at all. You don't look 50. Well, thank you. How do you? I'll be 56, April 28th. I look 85, but that's all right. You say April 28th? My birthday's April 29th. There you go. You and Willie Nelson, April 28th, 29th. He has two birthdays. What? Half of his body came out on the 28th, the other half came out on the 29th. So he, and, and the, what is, is that real? Is when that they true? sewed him back together. No. He got, that was around 11.55 a night. Half his body came out on the 28th, the other half came out on the 29th. So That's awesome. Celebrates two birthdays. He gets two days. Of course I mean, he does. I, that's the first time I ever heard that. And you he know that? makes <laughs> sure everybody knows it too. Usually. Oh, really? Yeah. When did you meet, when'd you meet him? I met him through Herky back in the early 90s. Herky Williams, who where'd everybody you, knows. Where'd you grow up? Arkansas, Darnell. Did you always play golf growing up? Pretty much. Played a lot of sports, uh, but golf was my favorite. Golf was always your favorite? Just because you that, that was the one you were best at? I was pretty good at throwing a ball, kicking a ball, mm -hmm. and, you know, shooting a ball. I just was too fat to run, so I stuck to golf. I, uh, when I first got into the league, I went down, or maybe I wasn't even in the league yet, but I went to uh, Brett Favre's uh, golf tournament down in Mississippi, and you were playing it that year. Right. And you literally, I think you drove every hole. It was like driver, putt, driver, putt, driver, putt. That's when I could hit it. You can't hit it anymore? You can no. still hit it. Not like I used to. Really? That's what happens with age. Yeah, I can still hit it 300 yards, which is nothing on the PJ Tour, but it's decent on the senior tour. Do you think uh, the equipment's changed a lot? Do you think that's helping these guys? The ball. The ball? How so? Tighter? Just the ball. It's, it's, it's just like... You know, when I won the British in 95, I had an ultra competition ball. I think it was the first three-piece ball that ever did anything. Uh, and it was hard back then. Now, you put a ultra competition ball up against the balls now, it'll mm -hmm. be softer than those balls. Now really? Four pieces, five piece. And they just go straight. They don't, they go far. It's all, it's all on the golf ball now. Those just can hit it these days. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Everyone does. I would love to see these kids hit a balada ball with a with an old Urban King persimmon wood. See what they could do. See what you do then. Just be spraying it. Go everywhere. Where'd you grow up? Vermont. You're from Vermont. Mm hmm I don't think really I've ever met anybody from Vermont. Bam. First one. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I you don't. Have, did you have brothers or sisters? Yeah. Did you always sing? Yeah. Really. Yeah, there's pictures of me sitting on a stool in the middle of band practice going on around me with my dad's band. And I mean, <clears throat> I'm sitting on a stool with a microphone in my hand, so I must have been singing. And oh, wow. band practice was happening, and I, I was four, probably. I've always been around music. Really? So you basically started singing when you were four? That's I was yanking on strangers' pant legs. Wanting and to. and wanting to sing for him since I was able to. Really? That's when I started golf, four years old. You started, you started golf at four years old? Yeah. Chase. I don't think I didn't. I don't think I played any sports until probably five, maybe six. Did you did you write stuff when you were a kid? I figured out in middle school, you know, probably seventh grade, eighth grade, that I was good at writing uh -huh. poetry yeah and i soon thereafter figured out that i could take that poetry and put it to the simple guitar playing that i was able to do did you start so did you start kind of start solo or were you in bands growing up i was in like high school bands growing up really? played the battle of the bands and the variety show in vermont stuff. around vermont no this was this was all once i had moved to massachusetts okay it was Vermont until I was eight, New Hampshire after that, until I was <coughs> 12, and then I moved to Massachusetts. And that's when you started, you were always in bands, just doing music and stuff? Did you go to, did you go to college? No. 
So what happened after high school? I uh, went to goldsmithing school and learned to be a goldsmith. What's a goldsmith do? They, when you have a, well, a, a goldsmith does a lot of things, really. A goldsmith can make the jewelry that you're wearing. Yeah. It, they can fix the jewelry that you're wearing. They can. Did you know this? No, I didn't. Yeah, I can, I can do everything from carve it out of wax to cast it into gold to finish it down to a nice fine product, set stones in it. The whole really? Time. So I know when I'm buying jewelry for now, and I'm going to talk to Aaron. Talk, no, talk, to, it, talk to Aaron, yeah. It ain't worth, worth a shit now. No, but. But that's what I went to school for. How long was that? How, how long is that schooling? A year. That's not bad. It was like the school was like small school in the in dude's basement. There was four students and two teachers. Really? But you plowed through the whole course. The whole course in a year. Wow. So you were just going to be a goldsmith. You have singing yeah. didn't work out, or are you singing on the side too? No, it's funny. Leading into me going to goldsmithing school, my my uncle had sat me down and and had said to me. You know, this music thing is great and all, but what do you really want to do with the rest of your life? Sure. And I didn't have an answer. Yeah. So he suggested that I go to goldsmithing school and come back and be his goldsmith at the family jewelry store that's been on my mom's side of the family since the 50s. Gotcha. Wow. So that made sense then. I mean, I just wanted to make sure you had a job. Yeah. So you get done with goldsmithing school. What happens then? Um, well, pre-Goldsmith school, right before I left, I went to a Christmas party, and my future guitar player's best friend and roommate put my head through a wall, and that was kind of how me and Mike met. And uh, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do what he was mad at, but he didn't know anybody else in the room. Right, or he did not know anybody else in the room. Everybody <laughs> else was his close friends. Ah. And then there was me. Mm. So I was the perfect target. Uh-huh. So um, I had met him at that party. We exchanged numbers, and I disappeared and went off to school. Really? And when I came back and started working, after my uncle fired me because I ruined a customer's <laughs> piece of jewelry that I was supposed to be fixing, and instead I melted. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I went to work at a different place and it was like a, a manufacturing. We made all the jewelry gotcha. for the jewelry store chain up uh -huh. in New England. And uh, Mike's roommate, who had put my head through the wall at that party, well, his girlfriend worked there. Really? And small worlds. Uh -huh. And next thing you know, I had hooked back up with Mike again. And we got together and wrote a couple songs and decided that it happened so easily that we should probably try to move forward with something. Create a band. Was, did you, had, had, did, so you guys just found people then? Like, did you guys have a different name for I the knew, band? I knew, no. Well, was it always? It was always Stained. Was it always, was like, it? even when we were a cover band, it was still Stained. Because you hear, cause you hear, you hear stories of like these bands and they evolve and they have one name and another name and another name, but you guys always, that's, How'd you guys pick that? Well, the band Lit was stained before they were lit. Really? Yeah. And the same guy that we ended up paying a chunk of money to to just go away so that we could have the name and be done with it deterred them from keeping the name. They weren't going to pay for the name. They came up with a different name, and it was Lit. Really? Yeah, but one of the guys in the band has stained tattooed across his stomach. Oh, no. And I give, him, I give him shit about it all the time because he's, he's my bud. Lit? And, but he's, yeah, it, it, but it was tattooed on his stomach before Lit had to change their name from Stained. I gotcha. I gotcha. To Lit. Did you guys have success pretty early on as a band? No, we were at the end. That's, we that's were like the end of giving it a giving it a go. Uh huh. Really. We had broken up a few times already. Yeah, it was up and down. We had been we had been beating our heads against the wall and. Trying to get a record deal for five years already. Really? It's hard. And gotten no from everybody. Really? Who, got, who, who, was, the first record, who was the first record label you guys went with? Uh, it was Flip Electra. And Flip was the, the indie label that had signed 
Limp Biscuit to then take them. Or no, how did that work? It was something like that. Or or Fred had gotten an indie label deal through Flip. Uh-huh. But it was definitely intertwined like that. And uh, Flip inevitably picked us up and shopped us and got us picked up by Electra. So it was a Flip Electra joint venture. And then we hopped from we hopped from label to label to label. All under the same umbrella. I gotcha. Yeah. We were Flip Electra and then we were Flip Atlantic and then we were Flip Roadrunner. <laughs> Flip Roadrunner? Oh, goodness. Did you go to college? Did you play golf in college? Three years at Arkansas. At Arkansas? Mm -hmm. And then straight to the tour? Was there, was there Q school then? Is that oh, a yeah. thing still? Yeah. I left in 87. I, I pretty much, I had a half scholarship and uh, was playing one for the team and my junior and senior year, I go my, last semester of my senior year, or my junior year, I um, said, I'm done. Yeah. I, got, I can't afford it anymore. I uh -huh. borrowed $300 from my mom, won the Missouri Open, won 6800 bucks. I was going to give her the check. She said, no, start your career. From that 6800 bucks, I've never had any help from anybody. Really? So you then you went uh, you won that and then did you have to go was that before Q school or after? Yeah, I um, for my first year was uh, nothing but uh, state opens and stuff. There wasn't a corn ferry, Hogan, Buy yeah. Comedy, those tours then. And then mm -hmm. I went to South Africa, played uh, over there for two or three seasons. You go right after Christmas. There's summers January, February, March, April, and all that. So I went over there and. Uh, Borrowed eight grand, uh, got little sponsors from eight grand, and uh -huh. um, I ended up going there. I won like four times, and we only won like twenty thousand rand back then. It was about eighty five hundred bucks. Yeah, so felt like I was living like a king over there. Was yeah. that right before or right after the Chippendales thing? Well, I, lost, I gained a little weight. I, I should, I should get back into that Chippendale thing. I, really I mean, should, I mean. <laughs> Oh, you've heard too, huh? Yeah. I heard the stories. Don't underestimate the fat man. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> what? What happened? I never heard the story. Oh, I can't tell stories like that. Oh. So I ended up going to the. Uh, they had a tour school for the Hogan tour, and I won that. Okay. And finished twelfth on their list. Got got all the way through the final stage of tour school in uh, ninety. And um, got my card, and shit, fortunate to keep it going for a while. Golf was a little, I mean, it's loosened up a little bit now, but I mean, it was pretty stiff back then, and you kind of came in and stirred up the pot a little bit. They didn't want no blue-collar rednecks out there like me, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, they, Did they give you shit? Like, were they on you? Was, was PGA on you? But, you know, to, I, wish, I wish the tour would have had a, a Boo Weekly long, long, like, not long after me, but sure. a little closer to me, because yeah. he he's as big as redneck as I am. Uh-huh. But no, we just... Hey, we didn't have anything. I didn't yeah. have anything. I wasn't. I wasn't. I was at Dardanelle Bay Ridge, a nine-hole golf course. I waited in the ponds to get balls, sold sold the good ones to the club, and yeah, I had practice with the old ones. Really? I learned how to play golf on a baseball field. You learned how to play golf on a baseball field. I'd take those old balls down. Uh -huh. We lived on Rock Street in Dardanelle, and I could walk down there with a bag, and I'd hit a cut to right field, straight to center field, hook to left field, and. Flop shots to the mound, chip and runs to first, flop yeah. shots to second base, chip and runs to third. Never, did you have an instructor or anything early on? Huh? Did you ever have an instructor or, you know? No. Never went to the local country club and got lessons? Nobody taught. Yeah. So it, it was just a nine hole, got good old boy redneck uh, club that we uh -huh. loved. Members are great. We used to go and play with them and I'm just. You know. It's probably why his swing is so amazing, because every teacher out there would have shortened his swing by at least half. Mm -hmm. well, I can't remember the coach at Texas when I got recruited. He says, you're not going to play for Texas. Your swing's too long. Really? Well, it's yeah, a lot fine. to put back together for the impact on the ball. Yeah. The right. longer your swing goes, the more moving parts you have in your swing. More chances for error. The more chances for error bringing it back to square yeah. on impact. Yeah. I've never used a junior set of clubs, so when I started at four, I'd get the club here and it would just fall and I could see the club in my left eye. That's when I knew to go down. Really? So that's how I got the long swing. 
That's crazy. I used to do it. I used to try to emulate him with my long ass swing uh -huh. where I could see the head of my driver in my in your left eye. In my right eye because right I'm left handed. Yeah. But uh I quickly learned the information I just shared yeah. with you before that. It's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a bad idea, man. Unless you're John Daly, keep your swing nice and short and compact. It's easier to replicate that. Absolutely. Less moving parts. And yeah. if it is long, do not change it. No. Not if you can hit the ball that way. Well, it's probably hard. Now, if you're trying to be long like John Daly and you can't hit the dang ball, it's probably because you're giving yourself way too many moving parts to deal with and you should probably shorten up your swing. Pop quiz, how safe is your internet browsing? I bet you don't know, do you? You might not even be thinking about it, but you know who is? Hackers, advertisers, data companies. There are a lot of people who know what you're doing online. So let me help you out by hooking you up with my friends at IP Vanish. IP Vanish is a VPN, a virtual private network. You may or may not know what it is, but a VPN basically makes you invisible to all those prying eyes on the web. You just connect to IP Vanish and then go browse wherever you want. And IP Vanish encrypts your data to make sure your info, like passwords and private details, remain yours. You can use IP Vanish on unlimited devices without sacrificing on speed, your computers, tablets, phones, even devices like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. Whether I'm at home or in public, I don't go online anymore without using. IP Vanish. And right now they're offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30 day money back guarantee. That's just like getting nine months for free. Stop sharing your digital info with the world. Take your privacy back today with a brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. So go to IPVanish.com slash Cutler and use promotional code Cutler and claim your 70% savings. That's IPVanish.com slash Cutler. Butler. Did you get a coach whenever you got on tour and stuff? Or no? You said hell I've had a guy named Rick Ross. Um, he was kind of my coach, probably my first year on tour. And he just said, low and slow, finish the backswing. That's all he ever told me. Low and slow, finish the backswing. That's all I've ever lived by. Rick Ross, he's, he, he was a golf director at Hot Springs and... Uh, Country Club, he ran all them six golf courses there for uh, Fairfield, Fairfield Inn or Fairfield, Fairfield Bays, all the Cooper, the Cooper properties. Yeah. And uh, so he, there he came to 91 PGA and I was not, I was playing really good. I had my card for, for 92. I thought uh -huh. my goal was yeah. keep my card. Sure. Going into PGA, I, it was all fun because I knew I was going to play the tour the next year. What was your favorite win? My favorite wins, probably the way it happened was the PGA, but the ultimate win was winning the British at St. Andrews. Yeah. I mean, that's the home of golf. Those are, they don't like no redneck son bitches going in there beating them <laughs> either. So the RNA, they don't they, they don't like that. But, and me and Palmer, we talked about it. They didn't like him when he won it. Really? But they soon to love him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah I yeah, think yeah. the RNA, RNA yep. and I are pretty good. We they always try and judge a book, you know. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. To try and judge the book from the cover before it even happens. Did you ever have any uh, singing instructor or anything growing up? He didn't need my, one. Well, that's the thing. That's my like, high you, school. You guys are both like prodigies. Like my you guys never had coaches. Music teacher. Yeah, sure. That didn't count. I mean, because you that's can flat who I can out, give credit to because you head. can flat out sing. Yeah, he can. You well, that's can. well. Thank you. Thank I had Rick oh. Smith come help me a little bit. Mm -hmm. about 2007, eight. He goes, I can't help you. Yeah, you've hit every shot I want to hit. Every time you hit a golf ball, it's solid. Mm -hmm. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. So okay then. I guess I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. I'm not coachable. He just laughed. He goes, You don't need a coach. Yeah. You don't need a coach. No, you guys. Neither one of you guys need a coach. You guys. I mean, you can ask pretty much everybody that's made it in music or golf. Yeah. Well, golf's different. Golf. Some of them need it, but music, they get a coach or mm -hmm. a singing type of person. It may screw them up. Yeah. Or that's all they're capable of. And when all the, all the teaching and all the schooling is failing you miserably because you're five days into having the flu and you still have to play a show, that voice will fail before my voice that is literally the voice that I wake up in the morning with. Yeah. I, you know, I don't warm up. I don't warm down. 
similar to stretching before sure. you know being athletic i don't warm up or warm down or or do anything i smoke cigarettes on stage the entire time i'm singing and playing i i smoke on my way to the stage yeah. like i i i <laughs> I drink whiskey on the rocks with a splash of water in it the entire show. <laughs> I'm doing everything wrong. Everything. Everything. But the, and it makes but, everything wrong. But the end product is everything right. But the same as you in football. I mean, it's all repetition. You oh, do yeah. It, you do it, you do it, oh, you yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, the hardest part, you know, for us on golf is maybe a new set of clubs getting used to. Sure. The hardest part might be for him is maybe a new song coming out that he's yeah. got to rehearse it a little yeah. bit. Unless he wrote it, exactly. he ain't gonna have to. I mean, no, I still got to learn them. Even if I yeah. wrote them, I still got to learn them. Yeah, but it's most, usually happening very, very fast. Yeah, and like I got everything we do is repetition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I remember I went to um, uh, one, my, one of my first football camps in, in in Indiana. It was at DePaul University, and they were filming us, and you know we're throwing and stuff and throwing us, and then you go in the classroom, they'd watch it, and they were like, "Hey, like you you've got to change your motion." And I was like, well, because I, I played baseball, too. So I, I, I would drop it down and then bring it, raise it up. And they're like, you got to, you can't do that. Like, you just gotta like just... you're about to throw a baseball. Yes. Because the baseball comes from down here. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, I can't change it. Like, I can't do that. Like, I, this is just how I throw a football. Um, and then we started, like, timing it. And I drop it up and let it go the same amount of time as the other kids were just going straight up and throwing. So I was like... I'm the same time as this guy, so like, why do I need to change my stroke just because that's what you claim it, how it should be done? So as much as you guys' point, like, you just, I mean, coaches can mess you up at, at some point. Yeah, as long as it's not killing your time and you're dropping back, yeah. you're good. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Where's your favorite place to play? Anywhere people show up to see me play. Really? Didn't matter? No, it doesn't matter. People that come to see me play are, uh, they're pretty, pretty passionate about it. Yeah. Oh. It doesn't really matter where I play. Oh, yeah. A sold out show is a show, sold out show. Yeah. And what's crazy is some of the wildest shows that I've had where, where the people were the most worked up politically on my side of things are in the bluest states. Yeah, like my California shows, they're uh -huh. in, they're insane. Really, they're they're crazy. I was just in New. I just literally got in a good the, way. Yeah, I just got off the plane from New York today, and I was kind of shocked. Like there weren't a lot of masks. There weren't a lot of like everyone was just like living life. Have you guys always been very kind of political on that side, it, or more so just? So you know, I guess, I guess I really wasn't very vocal about it i mean are you still doing the national anthem before during the band if, yeah. if it's the band show yeah yeah because it cool. sets up right for yeah. that yeah. you know it doesn't really i'm sitting down in a stool it doesn't really set up right for the acoustic show yeah but for the band show it's i start the show that way so you i mean you've always been pretty... I, again i as I got older, I got more vocal about it. Yeah. And I think that that's a natural progression yeah. that happens. You get older, you taste sure. real responsibility in life. You, you have commitments and obligations and, and things start getting a little bit more real. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got a wife and, a, and kids and a, and a house and yeah. bills and responsibilities and you start thinking about things a little bit differently. Sure. Absolutely. You I totally know. agree. It starts mattering. It starts mattering a lot more. And the fact of the matter, you know, I'm 50 years old today. Mm -hmm. It's now my turn. Yeah, exactly. This is now my generation. This is the, I'm now the generation that is responsible for the well-being of this country. I agree. So I, I'm, I, I'm not going to be quiet about it. it. Now is my time to not be quiet about it in any way because it's in my hands now. Yeah. This is just generally generationally passed down to each next generation yeah. and every generation is responsible for protecting it so mm -hmm. that our kids and our grandkids enjoy the, as much if not more than we did when when we grew up. Absolutely.
I mean, and look, that's look, that's lost. Like I don't even know issue. what the okay. do I, fuck is look going at this on. Mask issue. I can't breathe in a mask. I almost I mean, got. I, uh, it's ridiculous. I, I haven't almost, worn it. I almost got kicked off the plane. Um, well, I try and put it under my under my nose. I, so I, can I haven't it. worn it. I stopped flying. I, I stopped doing anything that would require me to wear it if I needed to go into a store or something like that. Yeah. I put it on. Yeah. But because they wouldn't allow me in otherwise. Yeah. yeah gotcha. But if I didn't have to wear it, I never did. Yeah. I never did. I I. I I never did. So I was, well, I told you guys I flew to New York. So we flew Sunday, I think. I don't know. I don't even know. What is today? Wednesday? And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there and my mask is kind of down a little bit. And the flight attendant, his mask is the same. And, you know, I'm walking on and he's like, uh, sir, can you pull up your mask? I go, it's just, it's the same as yours. I can see your nose, bro. And he goes, I'm, I'm not going to ask you again. Pull, pull your mask up. I put it up. I go, so you're going to be that guy. He goes, I am that guy. I'm like, Fine, no problem. Went and sat down. I'm drinking water. I'm talking to my daughter on FaceTime, and it's down. And he comes back again. He's like, sir, we're, what do you say? He said, I'm not going to tell you again. The next time I tell you, I'm going to remove you from this plane. I'm like, here we go. Put it back up. And I'm sitting there, and uh, all of a sudden, the gate agent comes down, and she comes, hey, sir, can I, I, need, I need to take you off the plane. I need to talk to you. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So get off the plane. There's a cop there. There's a flight attendant or a flight, the gate agent, and then two more people from Delta. And they're like, uh, you really offended um, our flight attendant, um, you know, with your mask comment. I go, my mask is the same as his. My, it's up right now. She goes, I need uh, you to make a promise that you're going to wear it the entire flight. And I go, never had an issue. I go, I'll wear my mask. I had no problem with this. Went back and forth a little bit. Went back, sat down, and we, we took off. And the funny thing, uh, Kathy Lee Gifford was sitting beside me, and she's on our team. So we had we had a chat and a laugh about it. But it's just it's just silly at this point. We're on a metal tube, breathing the same air for three hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once we take off, everyone's drinking and eating, and you take your mask off. And then what happens? Yeah. That COVID didn't exist then. No, the flu didn't exist. The flu doesn't exist. Didn't. I think I still think for the whole year it didn't exist. I still think in 2013 more people died from the flu than COVID. We're not no, it, yeah, you're and yeah, and you're right. Like flu just went away all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. just didn't have it. Yeah. And if you if you look at the VAERS numbers and you and you look at real numbers and yeah. as states and countries start reporting numbers that have been changed and augmented after truth has been sought out and found sure. yep it looks to me that there's been more vaccine injuries and deaths than there has been covid deaths yeah uh, and now we want to vaccinate kids right scary right Where's the world go? Do we get over this or what happens kids had point zero zero one chance to begin with They've got a better chance of... It, the flu is deadlier to kids than COVID, was, than COVID is. They've got a better chance of hurting themselves riding their bikes than COVID. Mm -hmm. It's really not about the COVID, though. It's about the control. Yeah. It's a liberal movement. That's all it is. When did the world, is, when did the world, when did the world get so political? I mean, because I remember growing up, like, it wasn't really that... When we abandoned religion? I think so. And had to have something else to put that kind of belief into? Did you grow up religious? It's always been around me. Sure. It's always been around me. I, I, I'm not necessarily a practicing religious person. I don't necessarily, I don't go to church. I don't go to a house of worship, but I certainly believe that there's something greater than myself. Has to be. There has to be. Yeah. When we stop thinking that way, we start thinking the way our politicians think right now and yeah. the way the way the left on the far side of things is is thinking right now and what's amazing to me is that what what used to be as left as you could go in the democratic party is now center mm-hmm mm-hmm it's true like bill clinton would almost damn near be a republican <coughs> at this point oh yeah 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 
Uh, no. I mean, keep it close. Compared to where it is now. To where it is now. Like yeah, in and he, that, he, if you if you shift the spectrum and yeah. you shift the gauge of things, like where yeah, it he, is now, Bill Clinton it. would have been considered a Republican. But, but he started it. Yeah, he started this whole movement. Basically. Yeah. How do we make the most of our time here on Earth? How do we bring meaning to our life's work? And what is the best emoji to use when texting? These are important questions asked on a weekly interview podcast, Life is Short, with Justin Long. In each episode, actor Justin Long chats with celebrities, actors, musicians, artists, and more about how they get the most out of life. In recent episodes, here is conversations with Severance actor Adam Scott, comedian Nicole Byer, and prolific author Mark Epstein. You get the inside scoop in their careers and, of course, learn their favorite emojis, too. Listen to Life is Short with Justin Long on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen one week early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Don't underestimate a comfy pair of pajamas. And you can get the softest pajamas imaginable from our friends at Lake Pajamas. Lake Pajamas make PJs for women, men, and kids in all sorts of fabric options. Try their signature 100% Pima Cotton that gets softer with every wash. Bamboo, poplin, and more. I've tried the bamboo pants and Pima tees, and they are so soft and easy to sleep in. I love them. My kids do, too. Just go to lakepajamas.com and use code J10 for 10% off your purchase. That's lakepajamas.com and use code J10 for 10% off. Limited one. One time use per customer. Well, unfortunately, you can go all the way back through. You can hear you can hear Bush Jr. and Senior talking about it. They all talk about the New World Order. Every yeah. one of them do. Yeah. And now it's right here in our faces. And there's there's no denying. There's no calling it a conspiracy theory anymore. All the people in charge are outwardly talking about it now. They what happened to our country? Getting people that were talking socialism back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. arresting them, yeah. get him back there. Now it's like. It's the biggest threat to our system. Oh, yeah. Thought processes like that. They have no, they, they have no place. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. You're free to speak whatever you want to speak. Yeah. But you're not free from the consequences of what it is that you choose to say. No, not at all. You shouldn't be. And and there's no place in the in the governmental system that we have in this country of of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's there's no place for socialism. There's no place for communism. There's mm-hmm. no place for any of that. It doesn't it doesn't exist because of what we have. Exactly. The country's founded on it, but we're not allowing it anymore. It's no. sad, is what it is right now. Well, I mean, what Elon's now the. That's a, that's interesting. What's that is, going on there? That is really interesting. What's going on with him? And Twitter. Well, and the fact that he he refused to be on the board so that it didn't limit him from the amount of shares he can yeah. buy, and. I wonder what he's gonna do with it. What do I? I hope that he buys all the shares that he needs to to take. Take to over. take control and yeah. and either turn it back into the free speech market that it was supposed to be, yep. or shut it the hell down and turn the headquarters into a homeless impoundment. <laughs> It'd be uh, it, it's going to be interesting because I mean, he's he's doing it for a reason. I mean, it's not like he he needs it or needs the money or anything else like that. Like he, something's going to happen. I hope. Oh, it's all happening. There's more happening right now than anybody wants to believe or some of it would believe. Do you guys think it's going to shift back to some sort of normalcy or? Oh, I think that the swing back as the pendulum swings, so to speak. Yeah. The swing back is going to be harder than it's ever swung back. Really? We're going we're gonna to get the House, we'll get the Congress, we'll get the Senate back. Yeah. And the swing back culturally and the swing back everything mm-hmm. is going to swing back more than it ever has, because they've never taken it this far. They've never pushed it to this level. Not even close. To the point where every single one of us, no matter who we voted for, no matter what we believe in, every single one of us is like, what the fuck is going on? They pushed it too far. Yeah. Have you seen some of the shit that Disney is responsible for putting into the classrooms of our children? Mm -hmm. Gender, the border, I mean, Uh I mean, they want to teach, and this is just Disney. Yeah, they want to teach. Forget kids. about the 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 rest of the factions of it that are just yeah. hard pressing 
turning our our kids' education into a, an indoctrination of 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 their movement, mm -hmm. which their movement is as anti-America as you could possibly create in one movement. Every facet of it. It's true. Is Trump going to run again? He's Daddy not going Trump. anywhere. Daddy Trump is going to run again. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. There's a lot of interesting things that are floating around out there that I hope any one of them come true. Like what? Oh, I would love to see us take back the House and Senate and and a whole handful of our of our our uh, congressmen and women immediately put Trump up for Speaker of the House. That yeah. would be good too. And have the Senate. And then run. and then proceed on impeaching everybody, and it all leads back to Trump again. And he'll finish out Biden's he's, four years, and no matter and then, what happens, he's definitely running again. I would say. I would say. I just, I'm, I'm just. I, I, I got head covers with Trump 2024 on it. Do you already? <laughs> we. Uh, I've never called him Mr. President. We've been friends since '92. I always call him Daddy Trump. Daddy Trump. <laughs> and if you don't know him, he is one of the greatest human beings I've ever met in my life. He. Uh, I played golf with him and Jason Aldean. Um, Right before New Year's, right before they had their party, and he was he was amazing. Yeah. So so nice, generous, telling stories, fun, engaging. I mean, he was he was it was he was cool. He was really cool. We'll see what happens. Something's gonna happen. It has to happen. Hey, it can only get better now. I mean, no. he's, he put no, our country. It, it can still get worse. No, he put our country in the greatest part our country's been in for years and years and years. Yeah. Everybody forgets he didn't have to away. do what he did for us. You know. Yeah. What did he get? Uh, what did he gain? More problems, out of doing headaches. out of doing what he did for us. Uh, he headaches. could have never in his life in the rest of his lifetime even put a dent in the money that he has. He he has all the fame and fortune. Before he did this, both sides loved him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. true. Yeah. What did he get out of this? And you can't tell me an ego boost because he got his ego kicked down his throat every single day for frickin' four years. It's true. And they still are. Tell me still, what he got out of this. Still on them. You know what he got out of it? Helping American people is what he got uh, out of it. from that. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's all I'm, he wanted. That's all I'm, he wanted I'm to do. I'm saying with everybody spinning it and making that they're all their negatives, what did he get out of this? Helping America is what he did. That's what he did. Makes it pretty pure, doesn't when you, it? When you boil it down. And, you, and it's like I told him, I said, I think you should run on common sense. Isn't that all he ever did? That's all he ever did. Yeah, but run on it. State it. That's all yeah. he ever did. That's what was so threatening to yeah. for, about Donald Trump is he brought common sense back. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I love that whole family. They're nothing but great people. And it's just, it was sad his four years all the great stuff that he did, he still got it done. Yeah. He was getting degraded every day from somebody. But you're the president of the United States. You're going you're gonna to get some of that. Yeah, you're going to take some lumps. <laughs> but he didn't deserve all that. No, I agree. Not for what he was doing for the American people. No, I agree. Sorry. And everybody, Obama, basically everybody had a handout. American had a handout. You know, oh, and, they all wanted him at his part at their parties. They all wanted him to attend their functions. They they all loved Trump yeah, until I, he became the biggest threat to their good old boy network. Their monopoly of, of them making money, not yeah. making money for the Americans and keeping their positions for a lifetime. Yeah, when yeah, that he, was he, never ever how this country was designed to be. Yeah, he thre he threatened he threatened the career politicians. Right. We're, but we're not supposed to have career politicians. No, but we do. Yeah. A lot of them. It's not, that's not part of it. You were supposed to come in, serve work your with, term, serve your, your term, term and, and, right. and put forth your good ideas that are good for the American people because you have nothing to gain out of it, which keeps it pure. And then when you're done, you go back to your life. You served your civil service. Yeah. You volunteered. Mm -hmm. You put yourself out there to do it. But this whole being able to be bought and paid for for a lifetime. Yeah. It, 
you know. Yeah. Most of them didn't like Trump because Trump didn't want anybody's money. He didn't need it. They all want somebody's money. Yeah. They want to do little deals behind the table. It's like, what do you call it? Clean up the swamp. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. Politicians, you know, on the liberal side are making so much money off. They don't care what the American people think of them. They want to get as much money out of their term, selfishly, instead of doing what. what yeah. Daddy Trump did. He could care less about the money. He wanted to help everybody. I mean, the first thing he did, he gave black colleges forty-eight billion dollars for the next ten years. Mm -hmm. Barack That's Obama it. had them coming back every year and asking for more money. Yeah. It's the first thing Trump did, and I think the first thing Biden did is he took it away took it when away. he got in office. Yeah, yeah everything. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, we're because he's not getting a piece of it. Well, hopefully how much we'll money do you think Biden's making off of Putin on oil right now? A lot. This goes back to the common sense. Why in the world would he ever do a deal with Putin on oil? Well, I mean, I mean, Elon Musk. I mean, he's doing electric cars, and he even said, "Hey, like, we need oil. Like, we've got to get the pipeline going." Like, here's the point. It's just, and, I mean, it's, he's it's say, common say, sense. Uh, Eighty-five thinking. million people or yeah. hundred million people that drive cars in this country. Yeah. If they all had electric cars. Yeah. The grid would shut down. Yeah, but we I, don't have the ability to make no enough way power. Our grids could hold the power. No, and, and you know, for you know, every battery that's made for yeah. a car, it's something like half a million tons of earth needs to be moved. Yeah, yeah. and it's like to make that one battery. It's also like six barrels of oil or something to make a tire. And like what happens when we run out of cobalt? We don't have that much cobalt in the world. It's yeah. not like a, a super, you know, it's everywhere. Well, the damn chargers are almost more than the cars. <laughs> the chargers are expensive. You, have. So. you go to a gas station, electric, or put your... And your electric there, car, let's think about the road. half a million tons of earth that has to be moved. What's yeah. moving that? Electric vehicles? Yeah. <laughs> we, we have big, heavy machinery that runs on electric vehicles no, no we don't. it runs on the diesel, diesel fuel that you have shot through the roof with all the bullshit that you're pulling yeah six exactly. six dollars a gallon yeah it's here's 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 the plus to it all Give it to if me. there is one this country has never been so aware of how corrupt it's true everything is yeah in its existence i think uh there was I, no way to communicate like this back in the day for the revolution no i i so I, even I, then people weren't fully awake and aware hell no no i think you're you're 100 percent right like that's never and it took three percent of the entire population to take america from britain yeah yeah people are highly aware right now and super connected well, it's like you said, our pants on the gender thing in schools. I mean, yeah. that's the gender God thing, bless, the the, the critical race the theory thing. Yeah, this is this is criminal what they are doing. Yeah. Criminal. Every teacher out there that has taught a child anything that has to do with sexual orientation should be in jail. There's laws for grooming mm -hmm. on the books. Mm -hmm. You have no business talking to my children or anybody's children yeah. about that. Yeah. They're not adults. Not even close. Not no. even close. Yeah. I can't even believe that the argument is about up to eight years old. Eight, after eight, you're going to tell me that after eight years old, it's okay for a complete stranger to talk about their sexuality or my child's sexuality with them without me knowing it yeah. or being there. Yeah, being present. It's ridiculous. It, it, is this really what is going on in this fucking country? Yeah. It, it, Eight. It's happening. How about... At least high school. How about once you're in high school, you still got to get written permission from the parents to talk about that shit. Yeah. Maybe I mean, they've already got their speech worked out. Probably should. Probably should have it. It's not a teacher's responsibility to teach. A teacher's teach responsibility is to teach school curriculum. Yeah. Yes. Not sec our parents are the ones who's supposed to teach that. Yeah. Always. It was never the job of a stranger. Right. This is a stranger.
Yeah. yeah. Legit. Like, you don't know your teacher. I don't know what a teacher is doing after hours. I just know how they are when they interact with my kids. Exactly. Yeah. It is a stranger talking to yeah, your and, children. And, and, it's, and it's the one that says, hey, why don't you stay after class? Talking yeah. to your children, not only That's about the sex, piece of crap I've ever seen but all sorts of aspects of sex, from the most depraved things to the most normal of things. Who the fuck do you think you are that you have any right to talk to my child about any of that? Mm -hmm. What's happening? Unfortunately. It's sad, Jay. No, oh, it is. It's so sad. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. But like you said, like, coming back to your point, like, I, I, the pendulum is going to swing. Oh, it's going to swing hard. Yeah. Which is... It has to. Has to. It has to. And like, like you just said, people are hyper aware, super connected, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to swing. Uncut with Jay Cutler is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening to me talk, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy and you can save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 27 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive casualty insurance companies and affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Happy 50th. <laughs> he Thanks, got buddy. a lot of shit off his chest, didn't he? <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> he got fired up. There, baby. Oh, man. I, it, it, it's easy for me to get fired up. I, yeah. I know, unf not unfortunately. Uh, I was about to say, unfortunately, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But not unfortunately. I, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm very fortunate that I am not one of the brainwashed masses. Mm -hmm that believe everything that the bought and paid for people tell us yeah. Yeah. they're bought and paid for why are you believing them why are you sure. putting the faith and 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 hope of humanity in the in the hands of just a handful of people yeah doesn't make sense they it just doesn't wanna, make they any want all sense. our money they just want to make money make oh, money well, they don't care about it, us it's yeah it's, it's it's money i mean that's what it is yeah. it's a big circle And that's all you have to do is follow the money. Yeah. Follow the money. There's some crazy shit out right now. Have you seen the newest, the newest stuff about? I'm not going to go into it because, oh my God, I'll get put on blast so bad. Mm -hmm. But have you seen the newest stuff about the, 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 the actual makeup of COVID? No. And what they're saying that they, they have found? No. Oh, go look it up. All right. Look it up for yourself. I'll look it up. We won't, we won't, we won't discuss it. Come to you... find out, I guess there was a reason why they, they constantly allowed us, through fact checkers and everything else, they constantly allowed us to believe that the virus came from bats. Okay. So. Well, that's been out for a while. Yeah. Well, right, but no fact checkers ever jumped in and fucking squashed that idea. They I let the, the fact checkers let that go. Well, they've been you eating go, bats. They've look, been eating listen, bats for five hundred years. You go, you go, and you look at what they're saying now, and you go and you look and you see what the fact checkers, which fact checkers by definition are people that deter you from the truth and push you back to the narrative. The fact checkers, when this topic came up all jumped in boom 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 and pushed it back over to the narrative of the bats i'm just saying i don't know what to believe anymore but when you start putting pieces of the puzzles together look into what what some folks are saying is 
The first is, time I heard about the newest it was concept. a poisonous snake bit a bat. Well, you and somebody see. ate the bat, and that's how COVID started. That's it's a hell of a story. I, I mean, it's a hell of a story. <laughs> yeah. You're playing somewhere soon, aren't you? You didn't you just announce something? Nine weeks. Ago. Yeah, we're playing tomorrow at Old Hick. Oh, Old Hick, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I go nine in a row next week after this week. Nine in a row. Yeah. You got you playing? Uh, you got any gigs coming out? Always. Always. I'm I'm perpetually on tour. I don't I don't do tours in blocks. Yeah. Um, keep, I take keep I take the two weeks of. July 4th to July 15th ish, 14th ish off. Mm -hmm. And I take uh, December 15th to January 15th off because the whole industry closes yeah. down. But other than that, I play every weekend. Damn. Keeps you young. Gotta, gotta you work. Good. You look good for 50. Gotta, so gotta, gotta, gotta make that. All they gotta do is keep their voice going. That's I gotta it. Keep, I gotta keep this You gotta keep going. that bod. You, you gotta, gotta keep that bod together. And I maintain and that They're temple. there for maybe one or two nights. I'm there for the whole week. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Well, tough I've kept you guys long a enough. I've, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Tough to be you. Man. I appreciate it. Um, happy birthday. Thanks, Jay. We're going to have some fun tonight. Yes, I will see you later. We will be smoking some fine cigars. We're going to do all that. and Sipping some whiskey. Yep. Thanks, boys. Yeah,